Very soon, you're going to start to see hundreds of these guys appearing at your local garden centers, home improvement stores, and even grocery stores. The ubiquitous tomato starter plant. Its popularity as the backyard garden crop is unmatched. Partly due to tomatoes being so awesome, but also due to the fact that they transplant so well and can withstand the rigors of early life as a cultivated superstar. Like part one of this tomato growing series, part two is focused on helping us obtain that ultimate tomato starter plant. The choice representative of that particular variety destined to give us the best harvest. So if you followed along in part one and you germinated your tomato seeds about a month ago, you're likely in this transition stage. Not quite ready for the great outdoors, but in need of some care and attention to take advantage of this head start that we've given them. There's a couple of things that we can do at this stage to ensure our success. So let's dive right in and book our one-way ticket to Tomato Town. Being such a vigorous grower and a relatively hardy plant, why do we start our tomatoes early indoors? Why are tomatoes the single most popular starter plant available every spring? Beyond the obvious of extending the growing season and thus the harvest, providing enough time to produce fruit in more northern climates like I live, and simply giving us something to do during the winter doldrums, there's actually two good reasons not often discussed of why you should start your tomato seeds early indoors. The first reason is time. Not the extra time that an indoor head start inherently affords us. No, buying us the time in the garden where another crop or two can be grown and harvested instead of waiting on the tomatoes to catch up. By physically starting and growing the tomatoes off site, which we're doing anyways because of the numerous benefits, we can plant a quick spring crop of carrots, beets, spinach, lettuce, arugula, so many things. Use those 40 to 60 days that the tomatoes don't need being in the ground or your garden bed to harvest some epic bounty, otherwise not possible. And the second reason that I start my tomatoes early and successively transition them from plugs to pots to garden is selection. Being able to continually choose the best specimens at every stage basically ensures a successful crop. Seeds are cheap, free even if you save your own. So the ability to focus on growing only the strongest plants can actually save you time, space, and money in the long run. It should be pointed out that many of us have taken different routes to get to this stage with our tomato plants. While some, like me, have used the professional plug trays, others have opted for the popular solo cut method that we see all the time, and some other really keen individuals have totally gone the other way completely foregone plastic and are just using biodegradable pots, you know, which is really impressive. But no matter how we got here, this transition stage is nearly universal for all of us tomato growers. We sprouted our tomato seeds with relative ease, but how do we keep our tomatoes thriving and progressing until it's time to plant them in the garden? There's two ways to do this, and it all depends on how you started your seeds in part one. If you started small and planted your seedlings in plug trays like me, our best option is to move those plants on to larger pots. If however you started your tomato seeds already in larger pots and the only replanting that you do is into your garden later this spring, then nutrients are going to have to come from somewhere else, usually a liquid solution. I do both methods, so let's tackle all things tomatoes and dive right in. About a month ago, I started my little tomato seeds for the year in these professional seedling plug trays. If you remember, I seeded the tomatoes both singly and using the multi-seed method. It doesn't matter which way you've done it, the steps are all the same here, and it all begins with a new potting mix. We want to move our tomatoes on from the plugs as they outgrow them and need more space. But we can also take the time to bolster their nutrition by using a nutrient-rich potting mix in the process. Recall that seeding mixes are generally nutrient poor. This is by design as we don't want to burn the delicate seedlings early on. 
So much of the nutrients in these trays here gets used up quite fast, certainly within the first month. Standard potting mixes that you find at the store are readily available, especially right now. And most of them come with a little bit of nutrition for our plants, but probably not enough to last very long. Right now is actually a perfect time to add in a granular fertilizer, either an all-in-one organic designed for tomatoes, or simply make your own nutrient booster using commonly available amendments. Things such as alfalfa meal or pellets, canola meal, rock dust, rock phosphate, Epsom salts, and even things like crushed eggshells, banana peels, or even seaweeds. And for you extreme DIY types that tend to do everything yourself, check out my ultimate potting mix video showing you how to skip potentially unreliable and underperforming store-bought mixes by making your own right at home. Whichever route you take, start at the low end of amending your soil, roughly five to 10% of the total volume. You can always add more later or give a splash of liquid feed if need be. Mix it in thoroughly and we're now ready to plant. Tomatoes grow quick, so I try to move them up in pot size at least four to five times larger by total volume. So now you can see why I used the plug tray to four inch nursery pot for a measured benchmark. Larger is never going to hurt, but space indoors is really prime real estate. So manage that wisely, especially if tomatoes is not the only thing that you're growing. Once your young tomato plants have at least two, preferably three sets of true leaves, it's time to move them on. Replanting the plugs or small plants is super easy. I follow the same recipe of procedures every time. Before doing anything, fill up your pots with that soil mix that we supercharged earlier, right to the top. Then compress it down about 20 to 25% and top it off again. Almost there. But before we plant, let's soak those pots from the bottom for about two hours. This is key and it's gonna do two things. First, it's gonna prevent any transplant shock from the soil being too dry. And second, it'll allow us to prep the pots by making holes prior to planting. Moving dozens or even hundreds of these tomato plugs along is simply a dream when all you gotta do is plunk them down in a pre-made hole. If you follow the multi-seeded method in part one, you can pry apart all your tomato seedlings gently by the base of the plants, never pulling on those stems. They're just too weak at this point. Try to keep as much of the roots intact as possible per plant and place them in the pot just like we did the single plugs. Now, whenever you're replanting tomatoes at any stage, you always wanna plant them deep. But have you ever wondered why? Well, tomatoes are one of those unique plants that have this ability to send out new roots right from their stems. In fact, they happen to be the best at it. Known as adventitious roots, this ability allows the young tomato plants to double or even triple their root system capacity in a very short period of time. As you can imagine, this is highly beneficial for a young plant that's just starting out trying to get itself established in the world. So take full advantage of this ability and get those plants down deep. The results are well worth it. With our newly replanted tomatoes, the light levels again need to stay high. Full spectrum, bright as possible, and upwards of 16 hours a day on, eight hours off. However, what you do wanna do differently now is keep the plants cool, a lot cooler. While we aimed for a temperature range of 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit to germinate these guys at first, nighttime drops into the 60s after the lights go out are more than welcome. Intense light coupled with cool nights is the single biggest trick preventing your tomato plants from developing long internodes, getting long and leggy. The goal is to create the strongest, bushiest plants possible with the thickest stems, even for the indeterminate or vine varieties. Okay, we've exhausted just about everything that we need to cover moving our small tomato seedlings into larger pots. But what if you started your tomato seeds in larger pots right from the beginning? That's great. That means you're only doing a few plants or you have the space to do it. Lucky you. Most of your work is already done. Much the same as our smaller plugs, however, your tomatoes were also planted in a seeding mix that has likely run out of nutrition or is about to. No problem there though. At the same stage of life, 
When the plant gets its second or third set of true leaves, let's give it some food. A balanced mix is what you want, and I usually go for either an organic liquid seaweed extract or some sort of fish emulsion type of booster. I dilute to one half or maybe two thirds the recommended strength and simply water in from below. Do this once at around a month after germination and again three to four weeks later. So essentially you're liquid feeding these guys twice before we're ready to take them out into the garden. This really shows the simplicity of growing in larger pots right away. And it's not that I'm against it, it's just that I never have the luxury of space. Plus, I do enjoy being able to cherry pick the best specimens at each stage of growth. Not to mention, if you don't replant, you can't readily take advantage of those adventitious roots that we talked about earlier. At the end of the day, you do you and experiment. At this stage, tomatoes are some of the easiest, most forgiving plants to work with. So if you're just starting out into the world of gardening, they're literally the perfect test subjects. As you go and get your proverbial green thumbs dirty. We've covered a lot, I know. Almost too much for really what amounts to a transition stage for these tomato babies waiting to make it out into the garden. So let's go ahead and do a recap to reinforce those key points to help us bridge the gap from germination to garden. Okay, we're over halfway there. I know it may seem like a lot, but we have to realize that tomatoes are such the prototypical backyard crop that they really help to demonstrate most of the gardening methodologies that we use today. Don't feel overwhelmed. Once you actually get planting, it all sort of becomes intuitive and falls into place. And tomatoes really are the perfect plant to start with. Hey, if you have any other tomato starting tips that you'd love to share with our awesome community, leave it in the comments down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.